Peppa, this is the story of Mum and Dad. <clears throat> Once upon a time, there was a lovely little lady called Rebecca and a fluffy head, Gavin. And on the first day of university, in Spanish class, Mum and Dad met and fell madly in love. My name is Gavin John Van Rensburg and my wife is Rebecca and we have 10 children and have been married for 25 years. The statement that families that pray together stay together since, we, since our early friendship and courtship and over the years, we've constantly heard it, and, and it's quite a simple statement, and yet it is so extremely powerful. And, and of course, it reflects a, a, a truth, a fundamental truth about human existence, uh, in particular humans with a, with a Christian Catholic faith. So we, we had heard it many times, and we believed it, and we experienced that in our own conversion. Uh, and I must say that we, our prayer life as a family is quite organic, but we do t come together regularly for prayer. Uh, and now what's, what's beautiful is that our older children have really deepened their own faith. And so when I'm kind of um, struggling at night for a routine or whatever, they'll say, Mum, let's, let's go and pray now. Let's, let's say a rosary. We need to say the rosary tonight, Mum, as a family. And that, that to me is such a blessing that now I'm, I'm getting inspired and helped by my own children to... Um, to to pray, to pray together as a family. And those prayers are, it's the most beautiful time when you can all come before God and bring your needs and pray for the people that we have in our lives and the world. If you like our, our relationships with our community, um, family, friends, Catholic families, that is, is, is central to our existence as a, a Catholic family att attempting to practice the faith. It is a very big responsibility as Catholic parents to train the children. Um, but the graces again, the graces and the miracles and the way in which God uh, ch changes their lives, draws them deeper, opens my heart and, and the way that I hear his voice has, has very much been experienced in our lived uh, sacramental life, I guess, in the church and, and also the way that we share our faith at home. Going to Mass is, is the pinnacle, I guess, of our week. So it's always about um, everything else around in the week points to, well, okay, which mass, mass are we going to? I must admit, at times we have to be, again, a little flexy, but we've essentially uh, been at one parish for the last 18, 19 years in the Ringwood area. In a sense, it's probably not, doesn't really matter which parish, but it is important to connect with community. So right from the very beginning, when we first met and first became Catholic, Beck and I got the sense of the importance of Catholic community. If you like, establish a bit more independence to, to not be so reliant on, on other family members assisting us and wanting to uh, go it alone, so to speak, and just, just uh, yeah, becoming more independent. And which, which eventually led to the point where we had to make a decision to sell the house. It has been difficult emotionally because we don't know where God is going to take us, where he's going to lead us. Me staying uh, with, with a couple of friends nearby and Beck, in fact, having to take the younger four children and staying in another suburb with some family friends uh, to allow the floorboards to be done. Uh, the, this is an example of where it was a, uh, probably the high point of the challenging period that we were experiencing uh, as a family. So we felt as though God was really calling for us. It had been brewing for a while and he was, he was really with us. 
helping us on this journey as he knew it was time to, to move on, to leave the home that we had been in for 20 years. Over and over again, the signs that God has provided for us have been signs of comfort, signs of, I am here and I am carrying you and I am providing. And, um, and emotionally, whilst, whilst there's that anxiety of um, what the future holds for the family, where we may end up um, living again, what community we might be in, where Gav's further employment may be. Um, with my own place in life where I am as a mum, uh, you know, may I, would I begin to start um, studying again, etc. as the children have gotten older. Um, uh, uh, I have, yeah, felt very much that God has been with us and that has calmed our um, anxieties and we just keep holding on to that trust that we have in God. Be a part of a parish community where it's more than just simply turning up each Sunday, attending the Mass and then ducking out and heading off. So the examples, I'd probably have to, and more credit goes to Beck in recent years where she's felt this call to want to um, do more and, and help invigorate the experience of parish life. And the example would be the Nativity play, which she, along with two other ladies in the parish, um, scripted and coordinated and choreographed. In fact, Beck did most of it. So, so several of the children have moved to Sydney, so uh, like are studying in Sydney. So we have some of our younger ones with us now. Um, because of the, our house moving and, and different things over the last year, we haven't had a very good routine with our parish because we've um, been quite unsettled. But in the past, the whole family was involved in a parish nativity play, which I helped to um, write the script, organise music and direct with another beautiful team of other women. And I will trust in you alone. And I will trust in you So our whole family was involved in various aspects of that and it was a great parish, uh, parish event. Uh, we've run that um, play several years now, for two years. Well, I was raised, uh, or born, baptised and raised an Anglican, so with Church of England. So I only met Beck at university. Well, firstly developed a friendship and then we started courting and, and religion very quickly became a topic of conversation between the two of us. I think God sent me my husband, Gavin, or my, well, my boyfriend at the time, he sent me Gavin at the perfect time in my life. He, he was a very open person and um, we were able to discuss uh, all sorts of things. And my faith at that time, again, was, was becoming more and more important to me. Eventually, she found out about Medjugorje, this place in Europe. We wanted to do some travels. So we went to Europe. We arrived in 1991, January. When we got to Medjugorje, being a very Catholic, devout, uh, pilgrimage, where of course Our Lady's been appearing since 1981. We were there for the 10th anniversary later on in 1991. We ended up meeting a bunch of um, other Australian Catholics. So I believe that God helped me in, in that process of us both beginning to journey together in our faith. He sent us the most wonderful priests and friends, faith-filled friends, and um, and we also educated ourselves about um, what it was, what, what did Catholic married life look like? What was it to be a Catholic spouse? And we got to know and understand those, um, those the, the vision that the church had for marriage uh, in a deeper way, and we loved it. Part of our travels, we, we went to Mexico and visited the 
Basilica of uh, Guadalupe. I knew that the feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe was the 12th of December, and it just happened to be that the 12th of the 12th, 1992, was a Saturday. And so we chose that as our, our marriage date. Uh, an openness at all times, I think, to be a merciful person, because in, your spouse needs to be able to forgive you for all the things ahead that, that won't work out or, or, he, or that you won't live up to uh, his ideals. So uh, Gavin is a merciful person. He is a faithful person. He's a, he's a generous and very open person. We were open to children. Probably we were embracing the, the World Youth Day spirit, the, the theology of John Paul II. Uh, we had uh, were beginning to get into the, the theology of the body, materials that were emerging in the early 90s. Uh, we, we basically embraced the faith uh, wholeheartedly and we thought it was, it was all in or, or all out. And part of that journey is to be open to, to life. I guess being young, we were very young when we got married. I, we didn't know really the, the challenges of children, but we did talk about six children. We thought six would be great, you know. My, my family, uh, my, both my parents were from larger families. He came from a smaller family. His, fa his parents were from smaller families. So, but, but having, having uh, grown in our faith and met wonderful big families, I think that's the thing is when you meet other families and see, see that joy, see that wholesomeness that's within a big family, it does attract you. And, and we did talk about having six children and how lovely and amazing that would be, but could it really be possible? Uh, was that something that God might bless us with? And, and so we stand now at having 10 and our... Um, and yeah, it's, I'm amazed and I'm thrilled and very grateful that we've arrived at this place. Within the first few months, I think Beck was even thinking, would she even, what, was she fertile? Would she conceive? And um, she was perhaps uh, quite anxious to, to get pregnant initially in the very beginning. Gavin was uh, open to children, yes. We, we took it as we came, day by day. While the challenges got greater, they did become greater. Gavin was still studying and employment um, that came along and years later, more stable sort of income. It did give us challenges, but, but, but we did trust that God would always provide for us. And that's always remained and always endured that, that we would trust that God would provide. So, um, so we have been open to the children that God's given to us. So of course, uh, five and five, five boys, five girls. It's been fantastic. So we had two, two boys to start, then two girls, then it was a, a boy, then three girls, and then two boys to even it up. The eldest, John Paul, uh, to, who's 24, uh, is very, uh, very humorous and very witty uh, in terms of his some of his own uh, unique aspects. Uh, very talented. He's, he's always been a sort of a natural all-rounder. Uh, he did spend, after year 12, uh, he did spend some time in the Defence Force, 15 months, I think it was, um, in the infantry in the Defence Force. He, he felt that he had, he had really wanted to serve the country in this way and to put himself uh, to challenge his own abilities, mental and physical abilities. Um, so he always gives 100% to whatever he does. He's a fun, fun guy. It's difficult to say. Um, but I guess there's a lot of um, 
There are responsibilities, um, but I guess there also um, comes greater freedoms as well. Um, so whilst from the outset you're, uh, I guess, a bit of an icebreaker, um, always the, the first one to be you know, moving to new territory, whether it be new school or new sports. Um, but in a sense, it's a privilege as well, because I guess in a way you're also setting, uh, setting the path or paving the way for, um, for your younger siblings to follow. So um, yeah, no, I feel very honoured uh, to be yeah, the oldest in, in the family at the moment. Uh, Elijah is our next eldest son. He's the tallest in the house. He's 22 years old and he is a ball of laughter. Um, he currently is studying at Campion College, um, doing a liberal arts degree. He's almost finished this year. He was made senior residential tutor up there because he's quite a responsible guy and he has a big heart for people. When he was young, that, that there was something uh, special, perhaps maybe a call, not, we're not wanting to, of course, uh, state that he, he will, or that things will happen, but uh, maybe possibly a calling to priesthood. Went to Kenya for two or three weeks. I went to South Africa for a month and then I went to Namibia. And the Kenya part of that trip, I did three weeks um, volunteering with the Oblates, the Oblates over there. So I helped in the schools, I helped with building um, this new seminary for some of the young priests over there. Um, I, was, I was helping with a, in a medical outreach program. So we would drive to these really, really poor areas of Nairobi and, um, and administer um, medicine and, and would give people bags of, of wheat and grain and uh, the way it helped me was, it really, it really made me realise that amongst all the poverty and amongst all those different things, th those humans over there are exactly the same as us and they, and they struggle with the exact same issues as us. They might not be as, as rich, they might not have as much um, material goods, but they really do um, share that same spiritual battle that we do here in the West. It's just in a different way. Then we've got uh, Marie Therese, Claire, who the eldest of our daughters, and she's 20, she'll be turning 21 later in the year. And very, uh, again, very musical, uh, hardworking, dedicated. She's probably a little like me. Once she sets her mind to a, to a goal, she will work extremely hard to uh, try to achieve it. It really, um, in so many ways, my, my, my siblings are my friends, you know, and, and they're, they're really my world and we all love each other and love each other's company um, so, so, so much. And so the advantages would be just having a consistent core group of people that love you and support you through everything. Um, when the world doesn't offer you that, um, you have your family who are your blood and, and bones who, who you, are just behind you every step of the way. What a gift Marie is to the house. Um, she, uh, in school, she was a... Um, very dedicated to her studies, uh, showed a lot of musical ability and passion in school, was, was known for her um, energy that she gave to the music department and was awarded a special award at school for the, her contributions to, to music. I guess we, we develop a, a, a thick skin and a resilience at times that we kind of just let it go and we just focus on being who we are as a family. I feel completely blessed to be the mother of 10 children. Um, sometimes I look back uh, and it seems that it's happened very quickly. I still feel young, I still feel full of energy uh, and yet to know that I have 10 children that call me mum is, uh, it fills my heart with great joy and, uh, and pride because uh, my children are, are wonderful and, uh, and I'm, very, yeah, I'm very proud and, and thankful. My, it's, it's been a big journey but I'm very grateful for what God's done in my life as a woman and as a mother to have blessed me with so many children. So it's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm thrilled to be the mother of 10 children. It's, it's her dedication, her support and her sacrifice for, uh, for firstly for us as a, as a couple and then obviously if we've been together for effectively 29, almost 30 years in fact, 25 years of marriage, uh, in all that time, there was the three and a half to four years of courtship, so I get to see her as, of course, us as, as individuals. Uh, there were all those wonderful individualistic qualities, but, uh, but as and since the marriage in 92 and with all the children coming along, she has just deepened in her uh, well, love and sacrifice of them. And she's continued to support uh, me with, with studies in order to secure some work, obviously, for, for us as a family. This is a 
our story. story. Shalom World brings to you the Catholic faith in all its different dimensions. It can be a faith to inspire you in, in your own living of your Catholic life in society. Salon World offers you an opportunity of being rich and strengthened in your family life. We live in a culture that needs to have a Catholic presence. We live in a culture that needs to be evangelized by the presence of Catholic teaching and the inspiration to live according to our Catholic way of life. I recommend to you you're involved, to be involved in the work of Shalom World. May the Lord bless you and bless the work of Shalom World. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.